Welcome back to another Colorful Keto with Jory. It's Tuesday. We're going to talk about it with Mikhail Alfer today. And we are going to chat about what happens when you start keto. So let's get her in and let's get to chatting. I'm so excited. It's been a couple of weeks already. Time flies by, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Whether you're having fun or not, just oh side God. note. Oh, I think your oh. camera might be flipped. Oh, shoot. That happened I... before. I apologize. There no worries. Are. There you are. Hey, how's it going? I'm awesome. How's your day? I'm so... Hang on. A... Sorry, my audio is taking a sec to kick in. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so ready for this week. Time is just flying right by us. It's it's craziness. I'm looking outside though and saying, please let the sunshine stay. Oh, right? This rainy, gloomy weather has got me to... I keep trying to wear sundresses, dude. Sundresses. That would be... And shorts and flip-flops and things. <laughs> and every day I put them on, it's like Marilyn Monroe windy. And I'm like, well... <laughs> I know, I know. Hopefully it'll come soon. This has been the longest winter ever for many, oh, many reasons. So many reasons. So today we're going to talk about your awesome blog. And I want everybody to know how that works and what days of the week they need to tune in for brand new content. Oh, well, thank you so much for, for letting me share with that. So the best, newest part of my blog is you. Because every Wednesday at 7.15, Dory friends, Dory uh, produces on my blog some yummy and easy and budget-friendly and kid-friendly and keto and sometimes carnival if you want, yes. recipes, right? And the best part about your, and I've never posted recipes on my blog before. I have a blog, called, I have a website, michaelaffer.com. On my website, I have a blog, it's called Food Freedom Friday. Uh, which clearly I would think means I post on Fridays. And it's just me and whatever's interested me in nutrition. And it's really more of a science blog, right? It's like a nutrition blog, an information blog, maybe some tips blog, those kinds of things. Although I do a lot of recipe stuff with my clients, I've never used my blog to post recipes, probably because I'm technically challenged and never really tried to do it. But that's a different conversation. Um, but when you and I got together... Uh, one of the things that you do so well is take this concept that keto is hard and that you have to get all of these extra special foods and that you can't do it with your family, like your family aren't going to like keto and those kinds of things. And you took all, you've taken all of those concepts and made these recipes that aren't only keto friendly and yummy, but somebody who wasn't keto could eat them and yes. they wouldn't complain. Because often yes. people have this preconception that diet food sucks. No matter what diet it is, right? diet food sucks. And even when you explain that keto is the bacon diet, they still say, eh, yeah, no. And then you're like me and don't eat bacon. So that's another problem. But again, conversations for another day. Um, so, uh, you know, so for me, that was a, like a really great addition. And I'm so grateful that we find, because you and I have been in each other's space for years. Forever. And, like... <laughs> Thank you, COVID. Because yes. I, seriously, COVID was the best thing that ever happened because we we connected like that. Yes. And um, yeah, so now I get to feature you on my blog, and I don't think you put your recipes on a blog anywhere, right? They, I know that you have your Facebook groups and stuff, and your and your YouTube and your TikTok. I did one time forever ago do a guest blog spot, but only just a couple, only just a couple recipes. I'm, I'm really newbie to blogging. I, I won't lie. Everybody says, Dory, you need a blog. And to me, I'm like, that's just another social media dude. <laughs> I got that. Right. Well, you do, you do. And you know, there's something else to be said for pick your lane as well. Some yes. People, I like to write long content. It's what I do. Um, you're you're really talented at the more creative stuff, uh, you know, and making making fun stuff. I'm the boring scientist, which isn't a bad thing. It just it's who I am. So you know, we each we each do what we're good at. The best yes. part when we collaborate is we can take the best of what you do and the fact that I already have that platform yes. and do it together. And the best part for me, although my blog isn't a 100% key 
your blog. My entire website is very much a low carb. Uh, it's a very much a low carb approach to nutrition. It's what I do. So although I don't call it keto as such, and I think the last time you and I were live, we spoke about that you were doing keto without even really knowing that it was keto, yeah. right? It just had to have a label. <laughs> so I love the fact that the recipes all fit in, and they're made with good stuff, right? You don't make recipes yes. with stuff. Is- well, and I think sometimes you limit yourself with the keto word. My fiance and I were talking about that just the other day and he said, but honey, your food is, is more than keto. It's, it's healthy food. It's natural foods. It's, it's whole foods. It's good. It's healthy. It's tasty. It's more than keto. And I think sometimes because we're so anxious to grow the keto community, we, we want to put that word on every, I'm colorful keto with Dory. Keto is everywhere. But I think sometimes by labeling the way I eat as a specific diet, it, it limits people who wouldn't look at it because they think, Oh God, that keto thing. That's what everybody's. Oh, that's so not healthy. I'm not going to even look at those recipes. So I, I feel like at some point keto will just be how we eat. I really, I feel that that's an eventual progression to how we fuel our bodies as more people learn about this and how natural it is and how ancestrally faithful this diet is. I think that's what drew me to it the most. When I heard about keto, when I watched that first video, I thought that it just really, it makes sense. That's that's what my people would have always eaten. I'm a prairie land girl, so we would have had venison, we would have had nuts and berries in season, and that's that's pretty much what I would have eaten thousands, well, hundreds of years ago. <laughs> right. And I mean, what, when people ask me how I eat, I always say, I, I eat real food. Yes. And I say, well, are you low carb? Are you this or that? I say, well, if you want to get technical, my diet is probably the closest to something that you would might call carnivore-ish. Like okay. I, I tend to eat a very protein heavy, a very meat heavy diet. That's me. But, um, I, I eat food, right? I eat real food, which is the same thing that you eat, yes. which is the same thing that human beings have eaten for millions and millions of years, which is the same thing most of us should eat, and we're not. Yes. Well, in the standard American diet, is very new in comparison. When people say to me, well, no, the standard American, standard Canadian diet, Dory, that's that's the framework to live by, that's really only been around for about 60 years. And coincidentally, the same time where obesity is a huge problem, heart attacks are a huge problem, high cholesterol, poor health, poor mental health, is that a coincidence? I think and you're... <laughs> you know, we're not allowed to talk about medical advice and this and that, but we've definitely gotten a little bigger and a little sicker. Mm-hmm. The last, I mean, I know definitely, I think you and I are in about the same generation, definitely since we've been around. Yes. Right? I, yes. And, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to shame anybody in, in any way, but uh, when I was young, it was, it was much less prevalent to be overweight. Yes. And now, it's much more prevalent to be trying to lose those last 10 pounds. Yes. Well, I remember being, you know, one of only maybe two fat kids. And that's, that's how it was. I was the fat girl. You know, I stuck out like a sore thumb. None of the other kids were my size. And... Now, when you look at the general population, it's so much more common to be overweight, if not necessarily morbidly obese, which I was. It was so awesome when the doctor told me I was morbidly obese. I, I celebrated with three days of junk food and crying. Right. I mean, yeah, and, and they're not particularly nice about it. And then there's no. the blame and shame game that goes on with that and it's like well eat less exercise more and yes you're just hungry and miserable all the time and um 
It doesn't work. High carb, low fat. That was honestly, when I look back on the dietary recommendations I got from my doctor, I was to eat moderate protein, super, super low fat. And my doctor always told me to fill up on those carbs, story because they're going to make you feel full longer. So my old plate would be half carbohydrate, a quarter meat or protein, and a quarter vegetable. And that's how I ate all of the time. He said, Dory, fill up on plain popcorn. It will expand in your stomach. It will make you feel more full. And I just was starving all of the time. I, I was so hungry and I was suffering so much. And I still wasn't losing weight. I was still gaining weight. I was still overweight. I was still morbidly obese. I was trying those things, but those things didn't work for my body. Well, and, and if you look at the majority of people, it takes a lot of work for those things to work for anybody. Yes. Right? There might, there might be some people, but there are way more the outliers, way more the exceptions. Then they are, then they are the rule, and it's and it's tough. So I also know one of the things that you had shared with me, which I think is super interesting, and we were going to talk about that a little bit. I think mm -hmm. um, was that you went keto without your family doing the whole thing, and I one did. of the biggest complaints that people get, and this is why I love your recipe so much, is that well, it's too hard because everybody else is eating this, 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 and yes. this. Like it's Taco Tuesday. Yes. I want the that everybody else is having. So yes. how did you manage that? How did you navigate that? Well, for me, I it sounds funny, but I didn't really change an awful lot. In my old life, dinner looked like this. A meat, a carb side, one vegetable. So whatever that meat, whatever that carb side was, whatever that vegetable. When I started keto, all I did was add an extra vegetable option and skip the carb myself. So say for example, it was spaghetti night and I would make spaghetti and let's say garlic mushrooms with it. Um, that would be what I would make for dinner. When I made it for keto, I made spaghetti squash in addition. And then I had the two vegetables and the meat. So I didn't have to cook everybody a different meal. It didn't really affect my everyday life and it didn't really affect my family at all. Their dinners didn't really change except for they got an extra vegetable if they wanted to eat it. That was it. That was the major difference at my house. And then my snacks are slightly different, but again, make extra because your family's gonna snitch your cheese chips and your meat chips and your keto popcorn and you're gonna be like, dude, you have your own. Right. And, well, and so then the next one comes like, well, Dory, how could you not have the spaghetti? Isn't making the spaghetti squash so much extra effort? So it takes me about four to five minutes to do spaghetti squash. So I cut it in half, I scoop it out, I put a nice tablespoon of bacon fat in there, I cover it with plastic and I pop it in the microwave for four minutes. That's it. It right. takes less time to cook spaghetti squash than the 20 minutes to boil pasta. I'm just saying. <laughs> and I, I, lo I love that. It's just because I know, I, and I know that you probably get it when you work with your clients, but when I work with mine, it's it's this constant and consistent. Yes. Uh, it's too hard. It's too much work. I can't make separate meals. Why would I deprive my kids of fish fingers and chicken nuggets and give them a steak? <sighs> I don't know why. Maybe because it tastes better. But that's just my opinion. Um, so, you know, those, those types of those types of things. Or just keeping the cookies around the house, knowing that they're going to tempt you. Why? Right? Why? Well, yes. The kids need cookies. Do they really? Do they really need cookies? Like, really? Really will they die? Well, and they I might. Like, that's a, yeah. No. They, they might be a little grumpy for the first for the first few days. So how yes. did you deal with some of that? Like with all the, with all their junk food. Okay. Right so I'm going to say this, this is how far cookies are from my reach at any time, at any given moment in my house, because Jacob has special needs. This is his cookie jar. He will access that as he pleases. For me, it was honestly 
about deciding I don't want those foods because if I'm focused on oh my god I can't have those foods my family gets to have that why don't I get to have that then yes you will live a life of suffering and deprivation and you will spend every day hating your own face but the moment when you realize it's not that I can't have those foods I don't want them because they don't make me feel good then it's easier to honestly just not want them like they're there but I don't I don't want them I don't feel tempted to eat them because they make me feel sick if I want cookies I'll make a batch of six keto cookies in my microwave in one minute cookies right and I, I think the mindset is a big is a big thing and it's actually it sounds so simple it is so simple but it's it not easy making that mindset shift takes takes a lot of a lot of work I, I know I talk about that a lot and um, once you do once you flip the switch you flip the switch yes right? once, once you hit keto and you're feeling amazing and then there's one day that you kind of go off the rails a little bit and you're not feeling so amazing um, it, it makes it makes a huge it's true right yes. it makes a huge a huge difference I know how I feel when I eat food that I don't usually eat and I yes. don't believe in an all or nothing approach to most things in life but like you it's a choice right it's well is it almost is it worth it is it worth yes. it occasionally it might be but those occasions as I've gone through my journey and um, you've probably found that as it's gone through yours those are those occasions become further and further and further apart from each other yes I would say the first time, the first time I dared to eat off track, I had been keto, let's see, I started in April, so May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I had been keto for eight months, and my girlfriend brought over her tin of cookies that she does every year at Christmas, and I thought, girl, I got this. I'm, I'm keto AF. Like, ain't nothing gonna hit me. I am, I am bulletproof, baby. You don't know me. I can eat what I want. And I thought, you know what? Two or five cookies? That's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt me any before I would sit down and eat a half a tin of her cookies. And I will tell you what. <laughs> I, I hit panic mode. Um, bad things happened. And overshare, but I was unable to poop. <laughs> like, physically unable to do so. I was in distress. I was uncomfortable. I put out the 911 call to all my ladies and I was like, panic! <gasps> panic! What do I do? What do I do? And one of my girlfriends reminded me about flax muffins. And I said, oh, girl, I love you so much. I ran off and I made myself a batch of flax muffins um, with a video attached in my house coat that talked about possibly overeating. <laughs> no proof. Hello, prove it. Um, and within 20 minutes, I was okay. But I feel like you're not successful until that first time you fall off track, until you realize that this is a physical thing that it makes you feel some kind of a way, then you never truly understand that. So I think that going off track once in a blue moon is a benefit because it reminds you this is a real thing. This isn't just some imaginary made up thing. When I eat wheat, I feel gross. When I eat wheat, I feel gross. I feel like somebody hit me with their car and it takes several days for that feeling to go away and it's not worth it it's it's a toughie and i think uh you know one of the things that i always get people saying to me is well if i never eat it i become more sensitive to it like it hits me harder and i always smile when i hear that because the body uh, as, as humans we are incredibly incredibly adaptable and yes. we the body physiologically works unbelievably hard every single day to make you feel somewhat normal yes. and if you're feeling like crap right all the time your body is working an insane amount to make that feel like crap actually be functional for you so you yes. break down in other ways right some people 
you know, some people get eczema, some people get acne, some people get stomach distress, some people get depressed, some people get arthritis. It depends. You break down in your own way, but eventually you break down as your body's working so hard. So then all of a sudden you start to feel good and your body's going, thank you, Dory. Thank you. I can actually finally just naturally feel good without having to work at it. And then all of a sudden you throw the thing at it that made it feel bad again. And your body's like, what? And you feel awful. Yes. And um, somebody's saying that he can't see me. Oh, I, you, you're frozen. I can see you on my end, but you're not actually moving. So the I'm audio okay. is good. Um, they're saying they can't see you. I see you on my end, but you are frozen. Sure. But I figured okay, the I sound is great. Mine. Yeah. That's very odd. I don't know. I don't if you know want, we can try having you pop out and pop back in and see okay, if it I comes back up. My thought quickly because I just interrupted with everybody. Yeah, so for sure. All of a sudden, you, you eat this thing that your body's like, what? Like, holy moly, what are you doing to me? So you really notice what used to be normal for you, how it actually feels. And yes. that's the difference. Right? That's yes. the difference. Now, because I'm frozen, I'm going to... Do I just get out and then ask to join again? Yeah, pop out. I'll just remove you and then ask to join again and we'll pop you right back in. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to wait for her to send us a new request and then we will pop back in. I had to take my sweater off, guys. I'm melting like holy man. I don't know how it got so hot in my house, but it certainly did. Okay, we're going to add her that way and see what happens. I'm like actually sweating. <laughs> it is it is warm. Okay, I think we might be backwards again. Oh, there you are. I'm okay. I'm back. Okay. Thank you, Dory. Dory's making me technically savvy because I'm seriously the most technical. It shouldn't be in 2020, but I'm seriously technically savvy. Do you know what? Me too. Before keto, I didn't know anything about social media. So if you guys are not technically savvy, know that it's possible to change that. Like passion will change that for you. When you want to figure out how to share content, girl, there is nothing that can hold you back. Right? Either that or you make good friends with Dory and she helps you. Dory will always help you. If you guys are struggling, send me a right. message. I'm a super good explainer. I'm just saying. Like, I live well, for that. <laughs> I got in and out here just just fine. And, and Instagram Live is, uh, is not... Is not my is not my thing. So yeah. I want to hear your thoughts on something that's a little bit controversial in keto Ooh, world. Okay. And that, um, so one of the premises of like, which I play around with with my clients in keto is stop trying to necessarily always find replacements for the foods that you ate when you weren't keto. Yes. Rather change the way you eat, which is yes. unbelievably difficult for people, especially yes. in a family. Yes. And so there's this balance between making keto fried food yes. or just eat food that's keto. Like there's this there's this difference. So you I think you get the balance quite well and you've done it quite well. So Do you know what about- I, I think it depends on your perspective. Some people say to me, you know what, Dory, I love the balance that you found between replacements and avoidance. And then some people come at me really hard. Like, I, I won't lie. I've had more than one person come at me really hard and say, you shouldn't be making breads. You shouldn't be making cereals. You shouldn't be making cookies. You shouldn't be making fast food replacements. What you should be focusing, Dory, is teaching people they don't need those things instead of teaching them how to replace them. Now, I think... I think it's kind of split right down the middle, whether it's good for you or bad for you, and only you know that. So, for example, if double cheeseburgers are your trigger binge food, and every time you eat them, they throw you off track and you go nuts, then guess what? You might not want to make a mug bread and have a double cheeseburger. But at the same point... I feel like everyone is different, and for some people, having the keto option will keep them on track. 
there's no need to cheat because you can have you can have that cheeseburger you can have that keto poutine you can have that keto pizza and it keeps them on track now for the other people it's the opposite it's it's like disordered eating and binge eating is only perpetuated with the healthy version i have one gentleman who follows me and i love him he's super strict keto but he says, Dory, I can't, I can't always look at all your foods because even though I know it's keto and I know it's healthy, it still looks like crack to me. It looks like crack to me. And I know that if I eat that, that is going to set me on the path to eat more and more and more things and it's going to snowball. So I think that people know are you able to limit or do you need to eliminate? Because if you're the kind of person who needs to eliminate those things, then flat out don't do it. Eat meat, eat vegetables, eat your fat, eat your salads, get it in, keep it clean. If you're like me and that kind of food can't sustain you, if you become easily bored, if you, if you fall very easily into deprivation and then binging. For me, the solution is being able to have a keto version of those foods to pull me through. But at the end of the day, only you know, should you be eating treats or should you be keeping strictly clean? And no one can make that decision for you. And even if you decide, I am strict, strict, clean girl. I never this, I never go off track. You still may want to have a piece of keto birthday cake. You might want a donut at your kid's birthday party and that's okay. You haven't set in stone. I'm strict keto. I never have treats. Doesn't mean you can't do it once in a blue moon. The same as if you say, you know what? I'm living the fat girl dream, baby. I eat what I want, I eat when I want, and I don't get fat. But if you come into issues where you're stalling, you may want to do a week of super strict keto and see. Eliminate everything down, start adding things slowly. You might have an issue with nuts. You might have an issue with dairy. You might have all of these different problems and it's not that keto brings out these issues, it's that you start paying attention to your body, you start paying attention to what you eat, and you start noticing things. Those things were always there. I always had IBS. Like, <laughs> I always had that, but I didn't realize, as stupid as it sounds, that it was tied to what I eat. I just always thought that's how my body works. Once something becomes your everyday normal it doesn't seem so odd you know if you're used to having migraines every single day of the week you're like well whatever it's just another migraine it's tuesday but remember your body's working really hard to make you fully functional yes every single, every single day the way that i like to deal with with that often is uh, and now I see people probably in a slightly different capacity to you is people often come to me when things aren't working anymore. Yes. So, um, you know, I like to put people on super strict, squeaky clean for about, depending, between 6 to 12 weeks. Yeah. And then we start, then we see. Then, then I say that's the way for us to get to a baseline, and then we see. Sometimes... You know, sometimes you can have the treats more often, sometimes yes. you can't, which doesn't mean that's always or never, because as the body heals, number one, the ability to handle that gets better, but the yes. desire also goes down, which is the most wonderful thing about keto, is, you know, how it changes eventually over time. It's not if you do it for three weeks and then you're off it for three, it's when you're relatively consistent with it, it 100% changes um changes how things how things work in your body and i think i've frozen yet again you are your sound is yeah. good but you're frozen yeah. for some reason okay. should i go in and out one last time and third time's a charm <laughs> sure pop out we'll pop you right back in okay and we'll see if we can't unfreeze you if we can't unfreeze you Honestly, I never intended to stick to a diet. Dieting was nothing that was ever in my main track. I 
I kind of found this by accident and I just ran with it. If I had known three years ago I'd be here now, I probably wouldn't have believed. <laughs> oh, there we are! I apologize to everybody. Clearly my technical challenges go way beyond pressing something on the, on the phone. I, 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 do you know what? I don't know if you've noticed. Like, total side note. But yeah. my internet has gone down the tubes because everybody's on internet yes. all the time. Yes, yeah. I'm glad it's not just me, because I'm seriously, I'm in my kitchen, I'm two feet away from the Wi-Fi, and it'll blink in and out. Well, I don't know, I put boosters in my house, and it made it worse. Mm -hmm. so. We have the boosters, too. I don't think they help. I really no, don't. No, I apologize. My dog's now I'm getting excited. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. No, my dog isn't keto, but we're thinking about switching her because you know what? Animals shouldn't eat vegetables either. They really shouldn't. It's not for them. Yeah, well, my dogs just eat meat, so they're uh, they're quite they're quite happy that way. But anyway, back to back to what we were talking about and this whole transitioning thing and going squeaky keen and and playing around and um, I think. And I agree with you. You're either a moderator or you're an abstainer, one or the yes. other. Some people can have a little bit. Some people can't have any, right? Some yes. people can have a drink. Some people can't without becoming honestly raging alcoholics. It's just yes. the, way, the, way that it, the way that it is. I think there's something to be said, though. Um, and, and there's a lot of stuff in the keto space, and it sounds like you came into contact with it, of people who are able to emotionally detach from food. Yes. So don't, they actually don't, they, there's things, there's things about eating that are beyond the nourishment, beyond the true vitamins, yes. minerals, and nutrients that we're getting. There's a connection when we eat together with people, there's a pleasure, there's a, there's a memory, yes. there's, there's a whole bunch of things. It's why we, there are the cliches of breaking bread with somebody. Right, there are that tribally we've always, always had feasts together. You don't often see, even in ancestral man, him eating alone. Yes. And there's something to be said for this pleasure principle that's garnered from um, from food. And you know, keto food in and of itself is is great. It can be tasty, this and then the other. But within our current history, within our current world. We have a relationship with pleasure foods that are yes. very, very different from steak and broccoli. Yes. And, and sometimes you just need a cookie, right? Yes. Sometimes you just want to sit down and share a pizza with your family or have a piece of birthday cake, not because you're hungry necessarily, but because there's a pleasure in sharing in sharing the birthday cake, even just yes. even just a bite. So yes. knowing that you don't have to have the consequences of feeling ridiculously nasty can really help to to balance that out. Now you have, you gave me a really good tip. Like your thing was brilliant. Is that you know that if you're going to make a pan of brownies and you're going to eat the whole pan of brownies, don't make a pan. The whole pan of brownies, or just make a smaller pan of brownies. You still get to eat the entire pan of brownies, right? Yes. So make make what you know that you can have. And the wonderful thing, even when you do them yourself, when it comes to real food ingredients, processed foods are cheap. Processed yes. foods are addictive and they're cheap and they're nutrient poor, so they make you want more, which means they're more expensive on the back end. But on the front end, they're cheap, right? Nutrient yes. dense foods, keto foods, even foods for keto treats are not cheap. Even when no. you're making your own nut flour, like you do, which is yep. way, way, like way more cost effective than buying it. And Dory has a recipe mm, on my blog, I nut do. flowers, nut flowers and nut butters. Um, yes. But even when you're doing that, nuts are not inexpensive. No. Right? Potato chips is way cheaper than a bag of nuts. Yes. So even, so even when you're doing all of that, the treat itself isn't inexpensive. So yes. there's a cognitive relationship that happens with that. That... Um, that makes, a, that makes a huge difference. <laughs> yes. Right? So if we know that it's that it's not just costing us 99 cents. Yes. We, 
eat it as often, right? You're not going to take out a hundred dollar bottle of wine and just down the whole thing for dinner every night. Same no. idea. Yeah. Also, there's something to be said, which is the best part about what I think about what you've done. There's something to be said for making it yourself. So much. And as much as I know, there are some fabulous, fabulous keto manufacturers out there and food manufacturers. I am a huge proponent that, yes, and I understand convenience and I get all of that. And convenience foods are fine. And if you don't, you know, if you think making your own nut flour is, or buying nut flour is a convenience thing, watch Dory's video because it takes 30 seconds. <laughs> it does. Like... Besides that, you know, there's a, there's a whole convenience thing and I get that. Yes. But a treat is a treat, and a treat should be treated literally as this indulgent thing. It's not just yes. something we shove into our mouths mindlessly to suppress an emotion. It's something, if yes. we're going to be eating for pleasure, we're eating to experience the pleasure. And yes. part of the pleasure is in the creation. I right? agree with that. Beings, right? Part yes. of the pleasure is, all of the pleasure is in the creation. Right? It's, it's like it's in the creation of it yourself. So when you're making it yourself, I think there's an appreciation that comes from that yes. that you don't get when you just pick up a keto cookie at the bakery. And as I said, I know there's great people out there doing great, great stuff. But I am a huge fan of that is that is the true, true, ridiculously occasional thing. And if you're looking to eat for pure pleasure or to share something with your family or to do something like that, then um, make it yourself. It's not, and this is, the, again, this is why I'm posting your recipe specifically is because it's not these complicated recipes with hard to get ingredients. And there's a lot of those. There's a lot of those keto things out there. And they're brilliant. Many. I made some of them and they're amazing and brilliant and delicious, but they take forever and they cost a good amount of money. So it's really, yes. it's just not worth it at the end. So doing something quick and easy that you're still getting that connection with making yourself, I think is a, is a huge big deal. So Renee on Facebook says, how do you know some of the keto food things are non-chemical additives or GMO? I'm having a hard time reading the ingredients. So let's talk a little bit about what I like to call poly unpronounceables. The things on the label that you're like, is that good, bad, ugly? Otherwise, I don't understand this word. Now, I feel like that's on purpose. I feel like they label things in such a way that you're not sure. Is this good? Is this bad? I just don't know. So let's talk a little bit about labeling because I feel like that is such a deceptive part of the food industry. So labeling is a is a big deal for me, and I think if we're talking about real food, um, I'm not going to say real food doesn't have labels or anything like that. But if we're looking at ingredients that are actually less processed, yes, you want to know what that is. Yes, right. If you've been on a low carb or a keto program for long enough, you know what erythritol is. Yes, you know what sugar alcohol is. You know what isomalt is, if that's in something. You know what dextrose is. You know if something ending in an O-S-E is sugar. Yes. You know all those things. But all of the other tetrahydra, blah, blah, blahs, offer no preservatives. They are flavor enhancers. They are um, bulk. They create bulk. There's a lot of fiber that's added to products um, in the form of inulin. Yes. Um, inulin is a big one or sometimes um, even psyllium, which yes. is fine if you're doing it at home, but it's used to bulk up or to or to make out like the keto product has less carbs than it does because it has more fiber. Okay. Right? So I'm always really, so I'm going to say a couple of things about, for me, labeling with a keto product. Okay. Number one, if you're counting net carbs and you're buying a product in a package, there's no more net carbs. Yes. It's, it's carbs and that's it, right? Yes. So you don't know how much of that has been balanced out to create a label. Number one. Number two, read the ingredient. If it really, if it kind of sort of sounds like something that you might know, it might be okay. Might. Okay. If you don't know what it is, you probably don't want to eat it. Okay. Or you don't want to eat it regularly. And the digestive distress that you get after eating the keto bar might be from 
some of those things. I also know okay. that carrageenan specifically yes. can cause a lot of issues. Especially for people with IBS, is carrageenan is it's a thickener. It, yes. It gives things something called viscosity. Um, it's like dampen gum, but um, cheaper. And yes. And it causes a lot of it can cause a lot of issues. Uh, again, the fibers that I said, the inulin and the psyllium can cause a lot of issues. Those are the ones that you would know. But any weird name, I would just say. I avoid. If I, wouldn't, if I wouldn't eat it if it wasn't a keto food, why would I eat it if it was a keto food? Especially if I'm trying to focus on eating more real foods. That yes. being said, if you're buying a product and you are a net carb counter, and again, that's a personal thing, it's a conversation for another day. When it, I always say you can count your net carbs in your cauliflower, yes. but don't count net carbs in your keto treat. Those are the carbs. If yes. it says 25 grams of carbs, it's 25 grams of carbs. And another thing that I, which is too much. And another thing that I will tell everybody is that if it looks too good to be true, it probably, it probably is. is. Yeah. So like I think that answers the question. It's not a definitive look for this, not that. The one thing I will say: always, 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 always avoid like the plague. Two things: anything ending in OSE. Okay. Right. Which is everything from sucralose, which is a terrible non-caloric sweetener. Okay. Extra to malta, all of those. Maltodextrin, yeah. Number two, anything that says hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated or modified. Okay. So hydro- partially hydrogenated and modified. And that okay. is um, that is talking about trans fats or man-made fats or intersterified fats. And everybody okay. thinks that trans fats are banned. They are not. Okay. Um, there is a minimum amount that you are allowed per serving. And I know from from our clinic practice that the maximum amount that you should consume every single day is a big fat zero. It's a big fat goose egg. So even half a gram per serving <laughs> is, is too, too much. much. Okay. Yeah, it's, no, honestly, it's too much. So okay. if it says, so if it ends in O's, and if it says hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated or modified, avoid like the plague. Anything else? We all have enough common sense to know. And uh, as a lovely person on Facebook, I know people ask hoping for the best, but <laughs> you don't know what it is. You kind of know it's a no. You kind of sort of know. Yeah. Well, and there are some companies, let's be honest, where we know their products might not be the best. If it says slim fast keto, it might not be keto. If it says Atkins keto bar, it might not be keto. Um, This is one of my favorite keto bars. It's Keto Fit. He's a Canadian guy and he actually launched last year on my son's birthday. But what I love about his products is there isn't anything on here I can't pronounce. It's almond butter, chicory root fiber, grass-fed collagen, uh, chocolate cacao chips, MCT powder, sunflower lithocin, erythritol, organic cacao, and Himalayan pink salt and stevia. That's it. So when there aren't any words in there that I don't understand, then I know for sure it's okay. If there's a whole bunch of words in there you don't understand, Google. Google them because they could be anything from your standard thickener to really, really bad chemicals. If you don't know what it means, look it up. Like bottom line, you want to know if you're eating that, you want to know what that is is that you're eating and i understand i never used to look at labels my god the labels all the other side from the directions there's nothing on there that i needed to know pre-keto it just wasn't any interest to me at all i've saved a few canned things just to keep for reference once in a blue moon but i don't we don't eat canned food for the most part anymore unless it's just like canned tomatoes we don't really eat anything out of a box or out of a can so much anymore so i don't panic all that much about labels unless it's something i'm gonna eat all of the time if i'm gonna eat it all the time then it super super matters so i think your face is frozen again your sound is awesome okay one last time should i go out and in Yes, let's do it. Why not? We'll try it one you know more what? time. I can't. I can't even go out right now. It's not okay. even allowing me. Hang on. I'll pull you out. There we go. I 
don't know why we're having such technical difficulties today. I don't know. Because <laughs> it's Technical Difficulty Tuesday. That's how, that's how we do. That's how we do round here. <laughs> so hopefully she'll be able to join us back in. Oh, Kevin, dude, it's so awesome to see you. Happy Tuesday, dude. I did a live on TikTok the other day for you. You weren't there, Kevin. <laughs> hey, you're um, back! I need to apologize to everybody. I don't know why this is happening, and I... I don't know. But, I, but we still get to see each other, and yes. I forget to talk to you. So these are... And we don't these are mind. Like so... Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, the less, the, less cat, the less packaged food you eat, the less of an issue it becomes. Yes. And then every once in a while, if you are having something, your body can deal with it a lot better. Yes. So Renee says she doesn't usually eat a lot of processed foods, but now when more and more of the keto products she's coming across just have words she doesn't understand. And and I think that's because there are more and more products out there. When I first started, keto products weren't a thing, especially not in Canada. Like I didn't try my first keto product. I started keto in April of 2017. And in June of 2018, I traveled to my first keto con in Austin, Texas. That was the first time I tried a keto anything. I had never tried a bar. I had never tried a drink. I'd never tried a shake. I had never tried a keto anything. Everything I had eaten up until that point was only things that I made by myself, for myself, with these two hands. <laughs> Right, and I'm in a similar place to you because I've been on this journey since probably 2010, 2011. So the word keto didn't even exist back in that day. No. Um, and keto has become a, a very much a buzzword. And we know that the food industry, it's an industry. Yes. I am not talking it. It's an industry. It's there to make money. They yes. are going to try and capitalize on the buzzword. Yes. And it's the same way that, you know, that low fat, and you were eating low fat cookies, like the snack bar cookies, same idea. Yes. Right? So everybody, oh, keto, I can eat as much of it as I want. No. Let's be smart, right? Let's all, like, have a brain. And, you know, be, be mindful that if we're going to trust somebody else, or if we're going to give the responsibility um, of nourishing our bodies, be it for pleasure or just for nutrients, both, if I'm going to give somebody else that responsibility, it's my responsibility to make sure that they fulfill their end of the bargain. Yes. And if they don't fulfill their end of the bargain, then I can choose to not give them my money. Well, is anybody shocked that Duncan Hines is making single-serve keto mug cakes? <laughs> like, does that, does that shock anyone that Duncan no. Hines jumped on that? But if you look at their ingredients... Are they a legitimate clean keto cake? I would say no. Are they a better option than a standard Duncan Hines box cake? A bazillion percent. Right. A bazillion percent. And I would even say maybe. Because if the box cake makes you feel like crap, and the Duncan Hines cake makes you feel like crap, then what's the difference if it's keto or not? It still right. makes you feel like crap. And that's okay. Yeah. Just, because, just because it's keto doesn't have this health halo around it either. Yes. It doesn't mean that automatically, you know, it's gonna, it's going to support you on your health journey, whatever that health journey might be. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that. And um, again, what works for you, Dory, and what works for me might be two totally different things. Your digestive issues and mine are, I mean, we're different humans. They're, they're different. So yes. I know there's some foods that I can't eat. There's some foods that I don't like. They might, they're probably totally different from yours. So, and, you know, it's up to each of us to to take responsibility for that. And I think that's the, for me, the underlying gist of everything that we've spoken about today, even from the very beginning, is take responsibility. Don't say I have to eat it because the rest of my family is eating it. Yes. Don't say it's too hard for me when it takes four minutes to make a spaghetti squash. Right? It's your response. Your help is your responsibility. And Yes. You know, I don't believe that we have the right to say I don't feel good in my body if I'm not making an effort to feel better. Yes. 
I had something that came up with a friend the other day and I wanted to ask you about it because I am pretty sure there's some science behind it somewhere. And you know how Dory works. I, I know the ins and outs and I know things work that way because they do. Do I always know the science behind it? Not always. So I wanted to ask you, is there a science behind five days? five days of eating in any certain way because in my personal experience when anybody starts keto if they eat clean for their first five days in my personal experience five days is how long it takes until the cravings slow down until the cravings stop when someone messages me and says dory i'm really struggling i'm i'm having a hard time I, I tell them five days give me give me five days eat clean eat good for five days and at the end of that five days if you don't feel amazing then you can give up but I guarantee you at the end of that five days you're gonna say I just I love this I want to keep going and I had one girlfriend who had been six months without a period six whole months Five days eating clean keto, her period started. Two days later, she had a cheat day, her period stopped. And she's like, it's actually, it's what I'm eating, Dory? It's what I'm, what I'm eating is stopping my period. Yes, girl. Yes, girl. Well, I will say there isn't a the size behind the five. Okay. I think five is a very doable number. Okay. And it's a mental hump that people can get over. Okay. So... It's not 10, which seems long. It's not even a whole week, which seems long. So I, 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 I do believe that. It takes about six. So when when we're talking about huge differences in how we feel, okay. like, like a friend, um, there's often a lot of food allergies or food sensitivities that come into that. And on a very basic level, if you remove, if you remove the, um, the offending food, it takes about 72 hours for that food to be totally eliminated from the body. Okay. So it, it takes about three days of feeling like utter crap. Now, some people will feel it for longer, yes. and it, there might be multiple sensitivities there, and we're only eliminated a couple and not all of them. Okay. But after about, so if you say three days to get it out, and then a couple of days to get it normalized, I would probably say most people, even if we're looking at something like keto flu, it generally, generally kicks in around day three, yeah. and it generally is done by day seven. Okay. If you, if you think general, very generally, I know you're going to get a lot of messages, my getting started until day whatever, and it lasted for six weeks. And there's many reasons that that can happen. Okay. But in a very general sense, that's kind of sort of where it is. Okay. So five kind of sits nicely in the middle. It's a safe it's a safe bet that there's going to be a positive change. Okay. I got all of the positive changes. I'm willing to bet that after five months, you feel even better. Oh, yes. At five days, it's long enough for the bad stuff to be gone and the good stuff to start to make a difference. Well, and you can stick to it for five days to see how, yeah. how you feel and how that's going. And I know for myself personally, when I tried to eat off plan on day five, it just didn't taste the same to me. I already had a slightly altered taste bud and it just didn't taste yummy to me anymore. Three days to get out of the system. So after day three, it will taste a little different. Right? It will taste something, you know, and... Again, you, there has to be some personal awareness, and I think some accountability and some coaching helps when, when that, in regards to that, right? Because trying to white knuckle it sometimes, especially if you're coming from, you know, severe metabolic dysfunction or severe emotional eating problems or severe carbohydrate addiction, which is a thing, people. It is a thing. Yes. Um, you know, you can't white knuckling it. You're not going to white knuckle getting off heroin. Right, and, and, no. I'm, and I'm not being I'm not being trite here. This is as difficult. This just seems to be a little more socially acceptable. Yes. And so you're not going to white knuckle it. The health and the support. If you can get over that 72 hour hump, you will things things will begin to happen. Now that doesn't mean everything in one day, but things will begin to happen. For sure, for sure, for sure. 
So let's wrap up talking a little bit about the keto flu because I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something honestly. I have very very little experience with the keto flu. I never had it. I don't know anyone personally who ever had it who dealt with symptoms. But it is such a concern for people that I've literally had people message me and say, "Okay, Dory, so I'm I'm all set." I'm ready to go. I've done all my research. All I need to do is plan off a week in my schedule when I can have the keto flu. And then I'm good to go, girl. And I have to tell them, you don't have to have the keto flu. You realize that's not a given, right? Like, you don't have to get the keto flu. I avoided it personally by switching my diet slowly, which is what I recommend to everybody. Don't wake up tomorrow and say, I don't eat carbs, I don't eat sugar, I don't eat this, I don't eat that, because guess what? You're gonna get sick. If you had to switch your dog's food from your vet, would the vet say, here's the new bag of food, go home and feed your dog, or would they say, slowly mix in the new food as you take out the old food? So if you feel like keto flu is the be all end all and this you have to schedule time to be sick before you can be healthy, please know that's not true. Well, I'm hundred and twenty percent. I think the media has overblown <laughs> keto flu and made it into something way bigger than it is. Yes. That said, if you if transitioning slowly is not the kind of person that you are, because some people are some people don't that, right? <laughs> There are ways to avoid it. There are things, yes. there are physiological changes that happen when you remove carbohydrates. Yes. One very, very, very big one, and it's the loss of electrolytes. When we store carbohydrates, we store water and salt. It's not the other way around. It's water, then salt. Okay. When you take the, away the carbohydrate and you start using them, the water is released. That's that initial like fat, that initial loss. Water and weight. And the salt goes with it. The electrolytes go with it. When you are starting keto, if you back load and front load and sideways load on electrolytes, and not one serving a day, three, four servings a day, that first week or so, I can almost guarantee you that you will be fine. That, and then there's, there's a nuance in, in protein consumption as well, that, but that's, that's way more than we can discuss here. But I will say, the biggest trick to avoiding keto flu is get a good electrolyte supplement, there are yes. a lot of really nice keto-friendly ones out there. I'm not talking Gatorade, people. No, not Gatorade. Right? There's a lot of great ones out there. Get a good one. And for your first week, take lots. Yes. Lots. Three, four servings a day. I'm not kidding. And it makes the world of difference. The world of difference. Yes. So we've got, I think, about two minutes left before Instagram kicks us out. So why don't you tell everybody where to find you, all your social medias, and then we'll wrap up for today. Well, sure. Well, other than my dog barking, um, <laughs> you can find me at, on my blog, at Michal, and Dory, on my blog at michaloffer.com. So that's M-I-C-H-A-L-O-F-E-R.com. Okay. Facebook, you can find me, Michal Offer Lifestyle and Wellness. And Instagram, it's at Offer Michal because Michal Offer was taken. It was somebody else with my name. So it's, it's my name the other way around, O-F-E-R-M-I-C-H-A-L. Um, I look forward to connecting with people if you have any questions or comments or um, something that you wanted to add or something that maybe yes. you wanted Dory and I to talk about because I'm sure we'll yes. talk again because we enjoy talking oh. to each other. For sure. We're going to make this a regular thing. We have so much fun together, darling. Thanks so much, everybody. It was so Bye, great, Dory. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, honey. Bye. Okay, so I want you guys to go check out the vlog. Tomorrow will be our new recipes. Spoiler alert, something carnivore tomorrow for my carnivore ladies. And Michelle has an awesome article on there about getting started with keto. So if that's you, if you're getting started, if you're just getting on track, if you need to get back on track, check out that vlog and have an amazing day, guys. I love you. Bye. See you soon.